Okay, this is Math 116, Section 1 1.2 Functions. Uh, so starting with a couple of definitions. Um, first one is a relation, and it's just a set of ordered pairs. So any set of ordered pairs is a relation. Um, a function is a particular kind of relation. So the it's a rule that associates each input with exactly one output. Or if you're more comfortable thinking inputs as x, outputs as y, for each x there's exactly one y. Uh, so first question is determining whether or not it's a function. Um, and so looking at this one, when x is 1, y is 2, when x is 3, y is 3, when x is 5, y is 3, you might pause there and kind of go, is that make it a function or not? Well, when x is 3, y is only 3, when x is 5, y is only 3. So we can have repeats in y and that's just fine. It's when we see repeats in x that's going to be a problem. And then when the input's 7, the output's 5. So this one we'd say yes, that is a function. Here on this one, when x is 3, it could be 3 or 4. So there's two different y values for that given x value. So for that, we would say no, it's not a function. Uh, same idea except from a graph. And we'll use the vertical line test to determine if something's a function. So if any vertical line drawn would intersect the curve more than once, then the graph does not represent a function. So basically, if I can draw a vertical line anywhere I want, and I only hit the graph one time, it's a function. But if I draw, so this would be yes, that one is a function. Here, if I draw a vertical line, I hit the graph twice. So for this given x, when x is 1, there's a value up here just below 3, and there's one down here just above negative 3 um, that are both two different y values for that given x. So this would be no, not a function. So if it intersects more than once, not a function. If it only hits once, then it is a function. OK, so then we pick up function notation, and that's this f of x. Um, hopefully you've seen this before, but if this is your first time, f of x is kind of like the new y. Um, this x, when something replaces it, like in this case, where it's f of 0, what that means is let x equal 0. Whatever is in here is what's getting plugged into the function. So here we're supposed to find f of 0, so in other words, when x is 0, so f of 0 equals 6 times 0 squared minus 4, so we're just substituting with 0. So f of 0 equals negative 4. So sort of old school, when x is 0, then y is negative 4 is what that means. Um, same thing, but with a fraction, which just makes the math a little worse. So this would equal uh, 6 and then negative 5 halves uh, squared minus 4. So that would be 6, uh, negative 5 times negative 5 would be 25, and 2 times 2 would be 4. And then here I can reduce that 6 and the 4 a little bit, so I think I will. So now it's 3 times 25 over 2, so I'm just knocking a 2 out of both, minus 4. And I think there, since I can see I'm about to have a denominator of 2 coming up, I'll get my common denominator going and do um, 2 halves. So 3 times 25 is 75 halves, minus 4 times 2 would be 8 halves. And then 75 minus 8 is 67 halves. So that's what f of negative 5 halves would equal. So this is the continuation of uh, the same problem, problem 3, so this is part C and D. Um, so now it's f of x plus h, which just means everywhere there used to be an x, we're going to put a x plus h. So this would look like 6 and then x plus h instead of x squared minus 4. It doesn't matter what's in the parentheses, if it's f of smiley face, you get 6 smiley face squared. So whatever's in these parentheses goes in for x. And then this will just expand out. So the um, x plus h, x plus h, let me show that once, and then we'll run into it a few more times, and I'll just do it in my head after this example. But it goes x times x, x squared, and on the outside we get plus xh, on the inside we get another plus hx, but that's the same thing as xh, h times h for h squared, so that will be x squared. And I have one of these and one of these, so that makes two xh's, and this is a term that often gets lost because people kind of do the fake distribute FOIL, which is not real math. Um, so this is what this is going to come out to. So now we have 6 times that, minus 4. So I'll run the 6 through and get 6x squared 
plus 12x h plus 6h squared minus 4. Um, this next one is something called the difference quotient, and uh, when you get to next quarter, this will end up being the definition of derivatives. Um, for this quarter, we're still just kind of treating it as an exercise in function notation. So we just actually found f of x plus h for this part. So I'm just going to copy this down because that's, that's that part right there, f of x plus h. So that's this. And then we're supposed to subtract from that f of x. f of x is this original function. So that would be minus 6x squared minus 4. And then divide all of that by h. Um, so with this, what should happen when we're doing a difference quotient is everything in those parentheses should cancel. So I have 6x squared, and there'll be minus 6x squared there. And I have minus 4 minus negative 4, so that'd be plus 4. So all that stuff drops out. And then the second thing that should happen is this h should divide in. So 12xh plus 6h squared over h is what's left. And then dividing the h in, so it knocks out with both, we'd have 12x plus 6h. OK, so question four has several parts. And this is the one I would have you guys try in class. So if f of x is this, find the following. And then it's asking, is f of 5 plus 1 the same thing as f of 5 plus f of 1? So f of 5 plus 1, let's do that piece first, would be the same thing as f of 6. So if I find f of 6, that will be 4 minus 6 plus 6 squared. Or f of 6 will equal uh, 4 minus 6 plus 36. So that'd be down 2, back up 36, so 34. And then if I find f of 5 plus f of 1, so this is saying plug a 5 in and then add to it the same thing with the 1 plugged in. So f of 5 would look like 4 minus 5 plus 5 squared. And then adding to that f of 1, so that would be 4 minus 1 plus 1 squared. And then just cleaning that up, uh, 4 minus 5 would be negative 1 plus 25. And then minus 1 plus 1 cancels, so that's a 4. And it looks like we get 29 minus 1, or 28. So we'd say, no, they are not equal to each other. So this is um, basically the same thing as what I just did, but with x's and h's. Um, so we know they're not going to be equal, but I'll go ahead and show the work on that. So for um, f of x plus h, because we're going to need that for this next part anyhow. So 4 minus x plus h, and then plus x plus h squared. So that will be um, 4 minus x minus h plus, and then this is that thing that I foiled out on the last um, one, so I'll just write out the answer this time. So plus 2xh plus h squared. So that would be that one. And then f of x plus f of h, so that means we put an x in, so this is just its original self. And then we add to that the same thing evaluated at h. So it'll be 4 minus oops, h plus h squared. So those are totally not the same thing. This is a 2xh, this doesn't, so not the same deal. Um, and then this is that difference quotient again. So we'll go ahead and copy our work from up here because we already have that. So that's going to be <coughs> 4 minus x. And then we're going to subtract from that f of x. Again, that should all cancel if all goes well over h. So we have 4 minus 4, so that's gone. We have negative x minus a negative x, so that would become plus x, so that's gone. And then we have x squared minus x squared, so that's gone. And so that leaves negative h plus 2xh plus h squared over h. Um, 
h goes into h once, so careful not to just cancel that, it's a negative one, and then plus two x plus h. So number five, I'd also have you try. Um, this Now, this time there's nothing replacing the x, so it just means we're doing the algebra with these two functions. So f is uh, 4x, g is x to the sixth. So this one's telling us to mi f minus g, so to subtract g from f. So we just take the 4x, which is f, and this right here, this means the same thing as f of x minus g of x. Um, it's just a shorter way of writing it. And so those are identical to each other. So f of x is 4x minus g of x is x to the sixth. And that's it. That's as far as we can go. Um, b is f times g. So 4x times x to the sixth. And that's a little invisible one. So 1 plus 6, that would make 4x to the seventh. And then uh, c is f over g. So 4x up top and x to the sixth down below. And then I can reduce a factor of x out, so it's going to make it 4 over x to the fifth. Okay, and then the last topic in this section is um, composite functions. So we have two different notations. Um, this f, it kind of looks like a degree symbol g of x, or f of g of x with the parentheses. Um, what this means is if we're evaluating something f of g of x, we're going to put g of x into f. So in the directions here, I gave a little example of a setup that for finding f of g of x, we're taking this piece and plugging it in for these x's. Uh, let's see it with an example. Uh, again, we've got these two different notations. Um, I think the book tends to use f open dot g of x more than this one. Um, I like this one better. I think it makes more sense. But you can think of it either way. So here, um, f is going to be evaluated at g. So f is this function, g is this function. Um, so that means we're going to put this in for that x right there. So in other words, we're finding f of 1 minus 3x. So this is going in here, and we get 1 minus 3x minus 2 to the fifth. So this is g of x inserted for that x. And then just cleaning that up a little bit, I would have um, negative 3x, 1 minus 2 would make minus 1, and to the fifth. So this one is the reverse, it's g of f of x. So that means we're going to evaluate g at um, f of x, which is x minus 2 to the fifth. So that's going to go into this one's x's. So that would look like 1 minus 3, x minus 2 to the fifth. And we don't want to expand that out, so that's as far as we would go. Okay, these are the ones that have you try. So first, um, f of g of x. So g is going into f. So that would equal 1 minus 4x minus 1 cubed. And then 1 minus 1, um, so that would cancel, leaving us just negative 4x cubed. And then that could be cleaned up a little bit. Negative 4 cubed would be um, <coughs> negative 64, and then x cubed. Uh, the next one is g of f. So this time, f is going to go into g. So that will look like 1 minus 4, because that's our g. And then x is next, so that becomes f of x plugging into that x. And that, as far as we'll take that one, because this would actually be a foil, so we don't need to clean it up. Um, and then last question is, does f of f of x equal f squared of x? So do these like multiply and become a squared? Um, so we'll try one of each and figure it out. So f of f of x would mean f of x is going into itself. So that would be x minus 1 cubed minus 1 cubed. So we're substituting this in for its own x. So that would be f evaluated at f of x. f of x squared, that would be x minus 1 cubed, and then um, times x minus 1 cubed. So that times that, or you can think of it as squared, would be x minus 1 to the sixth. 
And so that does not equal that. So they are not equal.